lying, thinking. Last night, how to find my soul a home where water is not thirsty and bread loaf is not stone. I came up with one thing, and I don't believe I'm wrong that nobody but nobody can make it out here alone. Alone, all alone. Nobody but nobody can make it out here alone. There are some millionaires with money they can't use. Their wives run around like banshees. Their children sing the blues. They've got expensive doctors to cure their hearts of stone. But nobody, no, nobody can make it out here alone. Alone, all alone. Nobody but nobody can make it out here alone. Now, if you listen closely, I'll tell you what I know. Storm clouds are gathering. The wind is going to blow. The race of man is suffering, and I can hear the moan because nobody but nobody can make it out here alone, alone, all alone. Nobody but nobody can make it out here alone. Hello, everybody. It's a wonderful Wednesday. I am Nadia Matthews, and the poem that you heard is from the late, beautiful, wise woman that is Maya Angelou. At first, I wanted to say that we lost, but I really believe that heaven gained a beautiful, wise spirit today. I am very, very, very excited to get into the show today. You have tuned into what's on your shelf, and we will be talking to Miss Barbara Jo Williams. This woman is full of wisdom, a phenomenal woman in her own right, and I know she is ready to get into what she's been doing, talk about all of the books that she's written, all 13 of them, and the 10 years of experience that she has that I know she can share with you, just a little bit, uh, just a little snippet. Before we go on, you know, we've got to start off with talking about what is on Nadia's shelf. And last week when you tuned in, I told you that I was reading The Innovation Secrets of Steve Jobs. I am still reading that awesome, wonderful book. On audio, I am going back and forth between two books. I am reading Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now, and I am listening to Instinct by T.D. Jakes. Now, I have to only listen to these these books in spurts because I, I like to let the book marinate and sink in, and especially the type of books that I'm reading. Um, the Power of Now is all about living in your now and not allowing the things that have happened to you in your past to plague on your future and, and, and in your present. So I definitely enjoyed that book. And of course, The Innovation Secrets of Steve Jobs is all about what it means to be an innovator, what it means to be a visionary, which is what Steve Jobs Jobs um, does and what it, excuse me what he did while he was on earth when he created Apple so with no further ado we're going to go on and bring in Miss Barbara Jo Miss Barbara Jo you ready yes I'm all Hi. right now let me tell y'all something before we get into the interview I, I was talking to Miss Barbara Jo before the show started and she reminded me that I only had two minutes left before it we were going to air and then she she told me that she was uh, a teacher and she sounds just like a teacher so it was really funny she's a teacher she was in the military I have got to know how did you go from teaching in military into writing books Miss Barbara Jo well it just kind of developed over time I joined the military right at, out of high school and uh, after that I spent four years in the Navy and then after that uh, I got married while I was in the Navy and my husband had a desire to go to college uh, at Florida A&M University. Mm -hmm. So, of course, if he was planning to go to college, I had to go to college, too. So uh, that's how we ended up at, at FAMU mm -hmm. and graduated from there and worked for several years as a teacher and a guidance counselor. But writing was something that I had always wanted to do. And I was on break. I think it was like Christmas break from the university. Actually, when I came up with the storyline for a novel, and over the Christmas break, I started writing that book. And two months later, I had over 200 pages. Wow. Wow. That's, so was, did you have any fear? Because you don't sound like you had any fear in there. Was the thing that I hear mostly from, from authors as they're preparing to write their first manuscript is really they had to get over themselves. Did you not have any of that transition at all? Did you just jump right in? 
No, I had that fear because I was 42 years old at the time when I started writing. I had always wanted to write, but fear had kept me from writing. Mm. How did you so overcome at, that? At 42, I was on spring break going through a midlife crisis and just thinking about some of the things that I had, that I had always wanted to do and had not done. And one of the major things I had not done was write a book, and I said, okay, it's time. Now, was that that... I, I said, I've got some time, and it's time to write. Awesome. Now, was it the book that you had, you were writing on your Christmas break? Was that the first one that you put out? Yes, that was my very first novel, uh, Forgive Us This Day. And like I said, I wrote that over the holiday. That was at the end of 2003, and I published in November 2004. Now, when you say published, did you self-publish, or did you go through a company? I self-published. I created my own company, uh, Amani Publishing, and I self-published. I had done some research. I had sent the book out to uh, some editors and some publishers, and, of course, it had gotten rejected. Mm -hmm. And so uh, once that happened, I decided to publish myself. And at that point, I really didn't know about self-publishing. I was telling a friend of mine how disappointed I was that the book had been rejected and, you know, I had tried my best and everything. And she said, well, why don't you just self-publish? <laughs> and I said, well, what is that? What do you mean self-publish? You mean people can actually publish their own book? And she said, yeah, you're a researcher. Get online and do some research. <laughs> so, <laughs> of course, I got online, I did some research, and hey, that's exactly what I decided to do. So now after you wrote your first book, did the second book come very easily? Was it like, oh, I know how to do this, I know the format, or did it take a few more books before you made it there? Well, when the first book came out, that was it. I thought that was it for me. I didn't have any aspirations of being a multi-published author or having, you know, a series or multiple books or anything like that. I just knew I had this one book in me and I wanted to prove to myself that I could write and that it would be published and somebody would buy it. And after, you know, it was published and everything and I was promoted, I thought that was it. But then the readers kept coming to me and asking me, oh, what about this character? Oh, what about that character? When is your next book coming out? And what is your next book is going to be about? And I was like, uh, okay. So at that point, that's when I really started thinking about writing another book. And are you glad that you did that? Now, you did your second book have characters from your first book? Yes, my second book was a spinoff of the uh, first book. Some of the characters, some of the secondary characters uh, that was in that book ended up in their, having their own book. So that's exactly what happened. Now, I read a post that you posted, I guess it may have been a couple of weeks ago, and you said you didn't really like cliffhangers. Do you do you see the necessity in them in that you wrote your first book and then you had characters from your first book in your second book, or was there no cliffhanger at the end of your first one? No, there, weren't, there wasn't a cliffhanger. It was a complete story. That's why the second book was a spinoff and had a different character. That's mm. the main character. Okay. So each book is a complete book, even though it may be some of the characters from a previous book. Each book tells its own story and ends at the end. Now, when you were young, did you have a lot of aspirations to write at all? Were there anything? Was there anything that happened in your life that's, that you said, "I just want to write a book"? Aside from yeah, well, always point. one of my goals because I love to read so much. Now, you just wonder what it would be like to write a book and what it would be like to be a writer, but it's just never something that. I was aspiring to be because I just didn't think that it was possible. So, you know, I was just a reader and just really loved reading. What writers inspired you? Yeah, so reading just kind of inspired me to want to write. And then later on in life, you know, uh, I would read books and I would start thinking, wow, well, you know, maybe I could write something, you know, could write a book because you know when you after you read a few bad books you start thinking well they published that they might would publish my book or that published you know I might could publish a book.
I think that's what actually started me to writing my first fiction story because I, I was reading, um, and it wasn't that it was a bad book or anything like that. It's just that I felt like I started filling in the blanks of the story. And I said, okay, well, this obviously means that I need to write my own story because I'm feeling, I'm, I'm saying, well, maybe she went down this road and then she went down that road, you know, where I felt like maybe the author left some holes. I started filling yeah. them in and that was the an indication to me that, okay, I, <laughs> it's time, Nadia, to write your own book so you can not be critical of anyone else's um now so i am very critical of myself i actually uh i laugh because i cringe to go look at at amazon and i love every time you get a review you you use social media um and you go and talk about the review that you got whether it was good or whether it was bad do you fight against yourself to look at your own reviews or do you just just do it I just do it. I look at it as feedback, whether it's uh, positive or negative. It's the way that the reader responded to the story, and you need to know that as an author. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you can grow. If you just get five-star reviews all the time, what is the incentive for you to grow and change Mm -hmm. anything? Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you get those two- and one-star reviews and, you know, people are giving you their honest feedback, then you have to take that into consideration and not take it personal. Mm Mm-hmm. That's great advice. That is definitely great advice. So would you say that now after 13 titles that if you feel completely comfortable with writing? Oh, yes. I feel completely comfortable with writing. Mm-hmm. All right. It's just, a natural, it's just like a natural process now. I get a storyline and I just start writing. I don't even do an outline anymore. Like my first book, I remember oh, I, I, I spent days trying to come up with an outline and mm-hmm. plotting this and plotting that. And now I don't do that. If I come up with the storyline, I just start writing. I let the story unfold as it as I write. Good. All right. Well, we're about to go to a break, but before we go to break, um, I just want to let you know we're going to talk to Miss Barbara Jo about what is on her shelf, what she is reading, and I'm very interested to hear that, as I know that some of you are. She, um, Miss Barbara Jo, can you tell us where we can uh, find you on social media? Well, of course, I'm on Facebook and uh, Twitter. Okay. Are you backslash, can you backslash, backslash Barbara Jo? Or is it Barbara Jo Williams? I think on social? so. I'm not sure about that on, on Facebook. It's just Barbara Jo, J-O-E. Okay. Well, I just want and everybody Twitter, to, go ahead, I'm sorry. And on Twitter, I'm Barbara Jo 2 too. Okay. At Barbara Jo 2 on Twitter. Perfect. All right, you guys, while we're going to break, while we're going to break, please go on your social media pages and look at all the books that Miss Barbara Joe has on her page. special event? Maybe a custom birthday cake. I know, it's your wedding day and you want a cake that will stimulate your taste buds and capture and create the memories for that special day. Well, Sweet Destination should be your choice. Let master sweet designer Montevia Gamble create a unique and delicious cake for your special occasion. But that's not all. Sweet Destination also creates other desserts from cheesecakes, homemade fudge, brownies, cookies, pies, cake pops, cupcakes, and just about anything that you can think of. So check them out at SweetDestinations.com or on Facebook under Sweet Destinations. Remember, the greatest conversations take place on the road to the sweetest destinations of the human mind. So let's do more than business. Let's make memorable moments. We are Sweet Destinations. Everyone needs a way to add gold to their financial portfolio. Carrot Bars International makes gold affordable to the masses with the FreeGoldPlan.com. Get gold in 24 karat 999.9% pure gold bullion in small affordable weights. Save your money in gold and even get paid to share with others how to do the same. No broker fees, no setup fees, and with referrals, your gold can be free. Go to the FreeGoldPlan.com. That's the FreeGoldPlan.com now. Tap out studio.
Studios of Hollywood is one of Atlanta's newest visual and performing art centers designed for you to perfect your creativity. Our 3,000 square foot event space includes a full bar, VIP section, movie screen, and two stages. Take advantage of our spring fling package deal for new and existing clients. Save over 40% when you rent our venue for $700 for events with more than 100 people. For booking information, contact Kendra at 404-578-1454. Located less than a half a mile off of I-20 off Fulton Industrial, we are Tap Out Studios of Hollywood, 620 Interchange Drive. Tap Out Studios of Hollywood. Inspiring creativity, changing lives, and making dreams come true. Lisa, you've been staring at that computer screen for 30 minutes. What's wrong? Ooh, it's my new marketing campaign. I want to tell people how great my business is, but I don't know what to say. I need copy for the website, newsletters, and brochure, and I'm drawing a blank. Writing just isn't my thing. My boss had the same problem, and he called Put It In Writing Professional Writing Service. Put It In Writing? What's that? It's a business just for people who need copywriting but don't have the budget for the big marketing and PR firms. They help my company tell everyone about the great products and services we offer through our website and when my cousin recorded his cd put it in writing wrote his bio and press release they even do resumes that's good to know because i'll be looking for a job if this business doesn't take off don't worry call the professionals at put it in writing at 901-359-6629 and check out the website at put it in writing 2.com that's put it in writing the numeral 2.com And we are back. If you're just tuning in, you have tuned into What's on Your Shelf. And today we have Miss Barbara Jo Williams. For those of you who need the number to call in, we want you to call in with your questions. The number is 678-701-3738. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and get into it. Miss Barbara Jo, what is on your shelf? What is on my shelf from a Every day. <laughs> I mean, I have so many books on my e-reader, it's not even funny. And someone just gave me a book uh, for my birthday. It's titled Don't Tell by Lorena Osborne. Mm-hmm. She's one of my favorite authors. Mm-hmm. So that's on my bookshelf. I won a copy of Bounce in a contest, Facebook book club contest uh, last week. And I haven't had a chance to start reading that. It's by K.M. Jackson. Mm -hmm. And I just downloaded a copy of A Brother's Honor by Brenda Jackson today. Mm. So tell us about something that you are reading that is really, you know, just challenging who you are as a writer. Well, right now I'm not reading anything because I've been in the writing cave for the last seven days. You know what? I knew that because your avatar is gone writing, right? (laughs) <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's, that's right. It's, and I've been there since Sunday. I had a book discussion on Sunday, last Sunday, for First Class Love, mm-hmm. and the readers insisted on a spinoff to that, and I started working on it that same day. Awesome. And so I've been in the writing cave for a week and 14 days now. So you have... And I've got almost 15,000 words. Wow. Now, since well, since we're going to skip over that part, we can really start talking about what your process is in writing. What have you found to be the easiest uh, process to start a book, Miss Barbara Jo? The easiest process is to just start writing. Wherever the story comes to you, that's what you start writing. Don't try and figure it out. You know, don't put too much thought into it. Just start writing and let it flow. You can always go back and edit and rewrite, re revise or whatever. But the main thing is to get the story in, get the plot down. I hope all the listeners are, are here really hearing that because our 
our uh, guest last week said the same thing, and that's exactly what I tell aspiring writers all the time. You have to just start writing. Don't worry about editing until you're completely done with the book. That is very, very good advice. What other advice can you give aspiring writers out there, Miss Barbara Joe, so that they can finish their manuscript? Because I can't tell you how many people, and I'm sure that you would agree, have 20 pages of some book sitting somewhere <laughs> that they have not finished. Well, uh, the only other tip I can give is just say try and write every day. If you're working on a book, try and write every day. Like I hear writers say all the time, you have to write every day. I don't write every day, but if I'm working on a book, then I try to write every day to get the book finished. What it you... doesn't have to be five hours a day. It, could be, it may be five minutes, but I try to put in some time every day to write something, even if it's just an idea for the next scene. You don't have to sit down and write a complete scene or a complete chapter. Just jot down a, a few ideas. I think that's a great point as well. Something that I found when I am writing, I, everybody that knows me knows that I write Christian fiction, and I also um, I have some romance in my books as well. And I have three little kids, and I can't tell you how hard it is to write a love scene while there's a little girl standing outside my door going, Mommy, you going to cook? So <laughs> that is the most difficult thing in the world. So do not feel bad if you have to skip a scene. I often have to skip a love scene to go on to another part of the book. So writing as it, write it as it comes. And then when you have an opportunity, go back. When the kids are gone, I pop on a little Maxwell, a little Jamie Foxx to get my mind stimulated. And then boom. I, that love scene comes right out. So absolutely do not feel bad if you've got to, if you have to skip a part. Now, the other thing I really love about you, Miss Barbara Joe, is you're very, very active on social media. Do you feel like social media has really been the catalyst to take your business to the next level or, or what? Uh, yes, I definitely feel that way. I've told people that I've sold selling books before Facebook, but I've sold a lot more books I've been on Facebook. <laughs> What's the key? So that, that's that's kind of uh, how how I feel. And I've said this before, too. I said people are, a lot of people on Facebook to get laid, but I'm on Facebook to get paid. <laughs> I couldn't have put that better myself. I all so when I get requests from all these strange-looking men and everything like that, <laughs> no, thank you. If you're not looking for a book, keep it moving. So you do get those crazy inboxes every now and then? Yes, you do get those crazy inboxes every now and then. I know how to delete and block and uh, keep right on going. But the thing about Facebook is that there are so many book clubs on Facebook mm -hmm. now. And if you just really get into a good book club, an active book club, mm -hmm. that's going to embrace your book, embrace you as an author, and help you promote your work, then that's the best place you can be. What um, book club have you found to be the most active? I think I know, but you tell me which one you think has been the most active uh, with your business. Well, the one that's been the most active for me is by far building relationships around books. books. I, I knew you were going to say Brab. They, do they post every minute? I, I mean, they... they I don't know, but they, they post a lot uh, every day, and they do off the spotlights, they do book chats. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the other book clubs, I mean, you just see a lot of posts, people promoting themselves and people posting links to buy their books. There's no discussion about books or anything like that. But Grab is very active, and uh, Page Turners, uh, FB's Page Turners is very active, too. Good. So they do a lot of book discussions. You can't even post a book link on there. It's just all about book discussions. So that's a really good place to be. What's the and Sormag, Shades of Romance Magazine, E-Reader Book Club. I'm also, uh, very, that's a very active book club. As a matter of fact, we're having a book discussion today uh, for my latest read, which is Golden by Sherman Galloway. So we're having a book, uh, book club discussion all day right here on Facebook just for that book. What, have you, what is the key to social media success as an author? I think the key is just being visible and being honest. And like I said, being in, and being in the book clubs and being able to connect with your readers. Connecting with the audience. Connecting with the audience, connecting with the readers. Like I said, I'm a reader first, so when I read stuff, you know, I'm also promoting other authors constantly 
too. It's not all about just me, me, me. I want the readers to see that I'm a reader, too, just like you. I'm looking for a good book just like you are. This is what I'm reading, and I hope you're reading me. Now, I, I would totally agree. Um, I have also been a recipient of uh, of a Barbara Jo shout out. So <laughs> on your page, <laughs> you shouted out how I let her steal my husband. You also wrote a review and I really, really appreciated that. So thank you very much. I know it was a while ago, but I truly appreciate the feedback that you gave me. So let's talk about um, since you are since you're online and you're doing a lot of things via social media, what other sites have you been using to utilize, you know, Oh, we have a caller. I'm sorry. That's what uh, caught me off guard. We've got a caller calling. Hi, this is David with search engine setup.com. Okay. And we just received the information for your new website <laughs> and it does look like your website. So, is he doesn't want to know about Barbara Joe. <laughs> okay. Let me put a plug for my website is barbarajoe.webs.com. <laughs> Com, and I also have a blog that's linked to my website. And for the last eight weeks, I've been doing uh, interviews, author interviews, you know, advice for aspiring authors from established authors. So if you're looking for advice, if you're an aspiring author, you can check out my blog, and it's on my website at barbarajoe.webs.com. Awesome. Is there any other sites besides your own that you utilize to, to really get your name out and to get advice for writing? Yes, there's there's a lot that I, a lot of websites that I visit. I, I can't, you know, I can't call them off the top of my head right now, but I have them. a lot of them listed in my book, uh, A Writer's Guide to Publishing and Marketing, Volume 2. In the back of that book, it's a lot of websites that I visited and I got information from just to go into that book and that I visit on a regular basis. Now, do you have, um, I know for a short period of time, your books were all on, uh, on special for one ninety nine on Amazon. Are they still listed at one ninety nine? Yes, they will be listed uh, for one ninety nine until June first. Oh, everybody hear that? One now you cannot beat that one ninety nine. Now, from a publishing aspect, I mean, I know, but I want you to tell our listeners how do you really benefit from a one ninety nine sale? Because I I get that a lot of times from people. Well, why would you give your book away for free, or why would you discount it so low? What is the benefit um, as an author and as a publisher when you do that? Well, the discount, the one ninety nine discount, is for one month, and that's just for the month of May, and in honor of my birthday, because my birthday was May twenty second. <laughs> so that was a special that I wanted to do for some of my readers that uh, was maybe struggling with getting all copies, because I had someone recently email me. She said, "Wow, I just read one of your books. Where have you been hiding? I need to get all of them." And I'm like, well, that's great because they're all on special for one ninety nine right now. Mm -hmm. So the one ninety nine, you know, if you that's just a basic business principle. If you're in business, you need to have a sale sometime to uh, increase your sale and you know your notoriety. It's about getting the readers, not necessarily getting the dollars, but getting the readers to buy into your brand. And do you find when you, one of the things I found when I lower the prices of my books, even if it's for two days, three days, whatever, I, I my reviews go up because I'm exactly. getting more exposure to the book. So, the more people who read your book, the more likely you are to get book reviews. Yes. It's, it's just that simple. The lower your price, the more sales you're going to make, and the more reviews you're going to uh, receive. All right, so we're going to take a, one more break. It's our last break. You know, we have to pay some bills in here. So <laughs> we're going to take a break. And when we come back, Miss Barbara Jo is going to talk to someone who wants to write a book, but they have no idea where to start. When we come back, you are tuning in to What's on Your Shelf. See you in a few.
one day I want to forget. From not finding my keys, to running late for my big meeting, then having the client cancel the meeting, to my boss wanting to revamp the entire proposal this weekend. This is really a day for a hot tub and a big glass of my tranquility wine. The skilled winemakers of Countryside Vineyards craft quality muscadine grapes into fine wine. Known for their distinctive flavors and characters, these hybrid southern grapes create a sweet class of robust wine. So the next time you're out, ask for Tranquility Wines or order yours online today by visiting them at floridavineyard.com. <sighs> now this is just what I needed. Tranquility Wine. Why can't everything be this relaxing? Tranquility Wines for those times when nothing else matters. Please enjoy responsibly, and remember, you must be 21 years old to drink. Are you in need of a dessert for a special event? Maybe a custom birthday cake. I know, it's your wedding day, and you want a cake that will stimulate your taste buds and capture and create the memories for that special day. Well, Sweet Destination should be your choice. Let master sweet designer Montevia Gamble create a unique and delicious cake for your special occasion. But that's not all. Sweet Destination also creates other desserts from cheesecakes, homemade fudge, brownies, cookies, pies, cake pops, cupcakes, and just about anything that you can think of. So check them out at SweetDestinations.com or on Facebook under Sweet Destinations. Remember, the greatest conversations take place on the road to the sweetest destinations of the human mind. So let's do more than business. Let's make memorable moments. We are Sweet destinations. Honey, what are we going to do with all these bills? It doesn't make any sense. We make more than enough money to cover everything, but we're still in a hole. Let's check out Madam Money. Madam Money? Who is that? She is a financial expert who helps people like us set and reach our financial goals. This is great. With her help, we can do all the things that we talked about. That's right. Now we can take that vacation we've always wanted and not feel stressed. Hi, this is Tara Jackson, also known as Madam Money, and I can help you clear up all of your financial diseases and those pesky financial STDs. See, this is why I love you. Yes, I know. So check out Madam Money online at tarajackson.com. T-A-R-R-A Jackson.com Tap Out Studios of Hollywood is one of Atlanta's newest visual and performing art centers designed for you to perfect your creativity. Our 3,000 square foot event space includes a full bar, VIP section, movie screen, and two stages. Take advantage of our spring fling package deal for new and existing clients. Save over 40% when you rent our venue for $700 for events with more than 100 people. For booking information, contact Kendra at 404-578-1454. Located less than a half a mile off of I-20 off Fulton Industrial, we are Tap Out Studios of Hollywood, 620 Interchange Drive. Tap Out Studios of Hollywood. Inspiring creativity, changing lives, and making dreams come true. We are back with What's on Your Shelf. Today we are talking to Miss Barbara Jo Williams, and she is 10 years in the business. There's so much wisdom coming from this woman, and I'm ready to get into a little bit more. Now, I have to know, Miss Barbara Jo, when you wrote Forgive Us This Day 10 years ago, what have you learned from this book to your last book, First Class Love? What have I learned? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I have just developed as a writer, so much as a writer from that first book uh, to this book, because when you go through the editing process, you learn so much from your editor. 
And with each book, I think it's just gotten better and better. And I see that, you know, as an author, and I think my readers see that as readers. So uh, that's what I've learned, that you just keep growing and you keep trying to make the story, each book better than the previous book. And that's where that feedback comes in from the book reviews also. It really helps you become a better writer and you learn what the readers want. And once you know what your readers want and how you want to write, then you just go from, you grow from there. So do you always write from the standpoint that I'm writing what my readers write? Uh, what, what they want? Yes, I'm writing from the standpoint of what I want and what my readers want. Because like I said, this last book, First Class Love, I had no idea of writing a spinoff. Mm -hmm. When I finished that book, I was done. Mm -hmm. But, you know, after the book club meeting and people just constantly saying, no, no, you've got to do another book, you've got to do another book, I'm like, okay, if that's what my readers want, that's what I have to give them. I believe in the law of supply and demand. <laughs> if I cannot supply my readers with what they want, <laughs> then I cannot make any money. Mm -hmm. Now, do you also... If they, are demanding, if they are demanding the book, it's my job to supply them with another book. So I had to come up with another storyline. Smart. That is definitely smart. Now, do you work a full-time job as well as writing, or is writing your full-time business? Writing is my full-time business. Awesome. And it's been for, well, since I started, because, you know, uh, I also publish other people. So in addition to having published 13 titles for myself in 10 years, I've published at least 30 other authors. So what have you learned so, what have you learned from that process, publishing the other what authors? Have I learned that process? I've learned that uh, publishing is a business, and you have to treat it as such, especially when you're dealing with other people. And you also have to be a teacher because you're dealing with people that are not familiar with the publishing process. So you have to teach them along the way. So if you're thinking of publishing other people, then you have to do that, do it with that in mind. Did you start uh, Tallahassee Authors Network as a way to teach other authors or to work with the authors that were already in your network? No, I originally started Tallahassee Authors Network just to bring together some local authors because I felt like, you know, I needed a support system. Okay, I'm doing this writing, but there's got to be some other authors here that are going through the same things that I'm going through. And I think it would be nice to bring these people together. So I had a database of people, you know, from selling my book because I had been, you know, doing that for like five years when I started the network. And so I had a database and I just sent out an email to my readers saying that, hey, do you know anybody interested in writing? I want to start this network and I'll be at the library on this day. And uh, I went there with the book in my hand, not expecting anyone else to show up. I said, well, if nobody shows up, I can sit here and read for two hours. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, six people showed up, and that's how we started the Tallahassee Authors Network. Awesome. Awesome. Now, how often do you travel to other states or cities to do book tours, or do you believe in those? Oh, well, when I first started, the first few years, I traveled from state to state. I'm telling you, I did so many book tours, uh, but... Now, the last couple of years, I have just pretty much been stationed here in Tallahassee and been doing a lot locally and a lot online. But I definitely believe in getting out there and promoting yourself as a new author because that's what I did. The first two or three years, I was constantly on the road doing book tours and promoting myself. And I travel places where I knew people. You know, I signed books in the backyard at barbecues. <laughs> I signed books in the living room at, you know, over tea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I did all the libraries, you know, and uh, so, I, yeah, I definitely believe in, in traveling. Now, publishing has changed so much in 10 years. Was it hard for you t for the transition of paper book, paperback book or print book versus ebook, or was that an easy, easy transition for you? It was an easy transition for me. It was a very welcome right. 
competition because it keeps getting easier. And easier. I know that's right. I mean, when I started ten years ago, the things I had to go through then. Wow, I don't know how I stayed up for so long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it has definitely gotten e- easier with each with each passing each passing year. So uh, definitely. All right, so I am ready to start talking about full-time the publishing and what um, aspiring authors have to go through that process. So I'm going to be an aspiring author, and I need your help. Okay? Okay, Ms. Barbara Jo, listen, I have my manuscript. It has been edited. I do have a mediocre cover. All right, now I'm bringing my manuscript to you. What is the first thing that you do? Well, the first thing we do is have to sign a contract. Of or at course. Least book it. Yeah. Okay, let's say I'm going to sign that contract. <laughs> you come to me, the first, when you, my first question is, has the book been edited? If you said that your book has been edited, then I ask for sample, you know, five to ten pages of sample chapter or, or whatever to review to see if it's something that I'm interested in publishing. And if it is, then you need to look at a contract. I'll give you a copy of a contract, and then if you're okay with the contract, then we can sit down and talk about the next steps in publishing the book. Now, you said if you're interested, is are there some genres of literature that you are not interested in publishing? Yes, there are several genres that I'm not interested in publishing. <laughs> I'm, just, I, I'm just, I need your help, Miss Barbara Jo. <laughs> I need to know your, your genre, but I'm not interested in, I don't publish erotica, okay. I don't publish historicals, mm-hmm. uh, I'm pretty much fiction, romance, you know, women's fiction, that type of thing. I tell people, I like to publish what, you know, I like to read, because if I can't promote it, mm-hmm. then there's no point of me publishing it, because, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, you know, like sci-fi story and science fiction, I don't read I don't normally typically read that type of thing. So if it's not something that I'm interested in reading, it's not something I'm interested in publishing. Okay. So say I decide I don't want to go with your company. I'm going to try to publish this book myself. What are some things that, um, some steps that I need to take to get this book published and out on the web? Well, the first thing you need to do is do some research. You know, if you're going to go into self-publishing, like I said, publishing is a business, and you need to know the business. So the first step is to do your research, and the best way to do that is to read some books. And that's why I published this, A Writer's Guide to Publishing and Marketing, to give people all the steps, to document all the steps that I go through. You know, the publishing process is different for every publisher. But I have a system that works me and I have documented my system and my book and so that's why I tell people you need to start with your research you can read my book but there are several other books on the uh, available uh, that talks about self-publishing and you need to read some of those before you just jump into the business okay and do you know of any sites that are really good for me to start the process of publishing to get it on the web you said what now do, can you tell us some sites that would be really uh, good for us to get the book on the web? To get oh, you, my book, Amazon, well, Amazon and uh, BarnesandNobles.com are the main two sites for my book. Okay, great. And what, what would be some um, great ways I can get my book on the, on the web? Some sites. Uh, the same ones, Amazon and Barnes and Nobles are the two main ones. Okay. So once your book is ready, you know, those are the main two that you can contact. Smashwords is good if you want to go through different uh, avenues besides Amazon and Barnes & Noble. If you want to get your books on iBooks or somewhere like that, on Kobo and available in iBooks, then you might want to go through Smashwords. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some other, some other gr- really great sites would be BookBaby, CreateSpace. Um, you can lo- use Lulu.com. Those are also some great sites if you just, you're ready to get your book out. But as Miss Barbara Jo said, it's very important. The first thing you need to do is research. And even before you do the research to publish the book, please make sure that you have your book edited. Edited, 
editing has been the vein of bane of my existence for a long time. <laughs> I cannot seem to get it right. So I know what a pain that can be to get edited and re-edited and edited again. And you think you get it right. So it's a very important part um, of the process. Editing, make sure that you have a great cover design. That is I mean, you just have to have a good cover because the words that people don't, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover is not true. People judge a book by what it looks like on the outside before they even open it. And you could have a Pulitzer Prize book in your hand and, and people won't read it if the cover does not look good. So those are definite tips that you're going to need to have. Miss Barbara Jo, can you leave us with some words of wisdom before we wrap up what's on your shelf today? Well, I was just going to shout out another great site is Writer's Digest. I've been a subscriber to Writer's Digest magazine for years, and writersdigest.com is just an excellent site uh, full of information for you. But uh, the best advice and words of wisdom that I can give you is to write what's in your heart. Don't try to imitate what's out there or what's popular. You know, if you're afraid of werewolves, then don't write a werewolf story. <laughs> you know, write what you would want to read, write the story that you would want to read and that's in your heart, in your voice, and then look for your niche to sell it to. Awesome. Well, you can look for the anniversary edition of of your book. Forgive Us This Day, yes. which was my first novel, released in November 2004. The re-release or rewritten version will be released November 1st, 2014. Awesome. It has been a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, Ms. Barbara Jo. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show. I have really enjoyed our time together and look forward to seeing your future. Yes, yes, yes. Well, you all, we look forward to you all tuning in next week to What's on Your Shelf. And we're going to talk about some great books. In the meantime, read a book. It may just change your life. Have a great day.